Hey everyone, Ty Clark here. I'm gonna show you today how to do Gua Sa on the upper back to help eliminate knots or fascial adhesions. So stay tuned and take a second and subscribe below if this is your first time here. I'm gonna show you how to warm up the body first. This is so important to be able to get the best results from Gua Sa. You don't ever wanna go in and do this on cold skin that hasn't been prepared for it. It's a Chinese modality. It goes back hundreds of years and it's used to restore qi or energy in the body. In my, in my experience, what I found this to mean is that the restoring of blood to an area that has been stuck is the same as um, restoring qi to the body. Stuck dehydrated fascia or connective tissue can cause injuries, it can cause illness, pain, and disease. And so when we use a tool to actually break up those fascial adhesions, you'll restore all of those things to the body. And I found that to work amazingly in my practice. The upper back is a common area of complaint. When people have pain here, it will feel sharp or stabbing or sometimes a dull ache, but it definitely takes over your day when you're having pain here. I would say 60% of my clientele have upper back pain, so it really is a prevalent problem. Our lifestyle and sitting in front of computers and holding up our screens can definitely contribute to this, especially when the sh front of the body gets shortened and it really pulls on the back muscles. One of the biggest complaints that I hear about after massage experience is that the muscle tends to just go right back where it was and the pain returns. And that's why you need to work fascia in very specific ways to make changes stick. And Gua Sa is one of those solutions because it physically breaks up these fascial adhesions and it takes a long time of the same repeated behavior and no stretching to get it to that point again. So Gua Sa works quickly and it works effectively. So far I've used different techniques to warm up the body and now I'm getting into the deeper tissue work and this is still really important to do before you do Gua Sa because you need to make sure all the layers of the tissue are nice and warm. And I use this opportunity to kind of discover where I'm feeling my elbow slow or stop so that I know where to focus my Gua Sa on. So you will be able to tell as we go along if the body was ready or sufficiently warmed up. Usually if when you start scraping, the coloring is still white or pale, or there's just no redness coming to the surface at all, it usually means number one, the tissue wasn't properly warmed up, or number two, they're just not ready for it. The client has to be mentally and emotionally ready for this modality for it to work. And that's just like anything in massage, when a client fights you or if they're just holding on to things or just not letting go, it is much harder to get results. So now we're starting the Gua Sa and the particular tool I use is a stone tool made out of agate. It's one of my favorites. I also love my steel tools. They're a little bit more expensive. I will go ahead and link to one of my videos that talks about which tools I prefer and you can also go in the comments and I'm going to link to Amazon to which ones I prefer as well. Now when you scrape, you do it in a diagonal direction and you scoop down and then up. Again, you have to go in gradually and it will sometimes take uh, several sessions to reach deeper levels. The biggest thing that I found is this. I will be massaging the traps and the rhomboids and will come across a huge knot or a fascial adhesion and if I take a few minutes to do some guasa on that spot, the next time I go through it, it feels smaller and more spread out and almost like I've removed the outer protective barrier to that big knot. I can then release these adhesions significantly faster. And this can also happen while I'm actually doing guasa, but sometimes problems are so deep that it requires both styles of treatment together. Now, I have found a spot that is really bumpy and thick on Jim, so I am digging in a little deeper here. This is a little lower than where he normally experiences the pain, but it's always telling where the problem spot is. And that's another thing that I really love about Gua Sa. It kind of acts as a cheat sheet and shows you the spots that need work. 
And also if your client experiences neck pain, I would recommend that you start at the bottom of the scapula like this, right at the bottom of that trap, because releasing that can actually help the neck pain as well. Now let's talk about the coloring that we're seeing here. Jim has a really healthy red coloring coming up, and this just tells me that he was sufficiently warm when we started, and that his body was ready to release. And the specific area that I'm staying in is one of his problem areas, and he is getting some petechia, which is just that darker color, and it kind of looks like hickeys when you're done. When you do this on a client, and it might be their first time, they, you might experience this all over their back, and it might be quite dark. And all of this, all this means is that they just had a lot of fascial adhesion. They may have some chronic illness or chronic fatigue or some other like chronic injury going on. And so those colors are all normal. Now, if the coloring is closer to purple, this usually indicates a chronic condition or just an injury that's been around a long time. And it's also okay. I would just be careful not to do too much at once. If you start seeing that, you can always do it in different sessions and in layers and always make sure that it heals before you do the next session on that person. Now you may have seen pictures or videos of people who had guasa done and the results turned out really dark and really extreme and this does not indicate success. In those cases that person probably had a really chronic injury and it was probably really stuck. So really the one color that you need to look for is that red color that indicates that it's releasing, that the treatment is effective in that area. If it's white, if there's no color change, then take some more time to warm it up with normal massage techniques, or you may need to try it on another day or use other relaxing techniques to help your client be prepared for this treatment. You've seen me do massage in between sessions of Guasa, and the reason I do this is because I am still looking for more fascial adhesions, I can fill in with my tool, but sometimes it helps to go in and they've been loosened and they're ready to release and that little bit of deep tissue helps them to finally do that. And also, as we scrape, we're releasing metabolic waste into the system. Stuck fascia traps metabolic waste. It makes it so um, different toxins and different things cannot escape the area. So when we are scraping through, we're releasing all of that. And so you need to make sure that your client really drinks a lot of water, especially lemon water. And just like any massage technique, if you don't drink enough water, there's always a possibility of feeling a little sick from having all the metabolic waste being flushed out. Now you may have noticed that yes, I did switch my tool and that is your standard issue jar lid. I think this is a great substitution if you can't find another tool or if you can't afford to get a heavier one you will have to use more effort to go through each stroke which is why I don't commonly use it but I just wanted to show how you can get really good results using this tool at home so that is something that you can go grab out of your kitchen and do now now I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the rhomboids and you're gonna to have to go through the trap to get to them so you're gonna to have to dig deep and this is why I don't use a jar lid on this part I need a heavier tool so when you're doing this, you're going to fill these little hard spots between the spine and the muscle and then the muscle and the shoulder blade. Um, you'll just strum across them and you're stripping that, the fascial adhesion and eventually it will just release and it's magical, it feels amazing. So don't be afraid to dig in right there. If they start to get a lot of the petechia or that dark stuff, remember you might have to split it up into two sessions. And I'm always gonna end the session with some more effleurage and some more deep tissue work. That's going to be the end of the treatment. You always wanna do that following guasa. You don't wanna end with guasa. It will help realign the fibers and again, flush out that metabolic waste. If you haven't seen my video yet on a deep tissue massage in this area, I would highly recommend watching that. I'm gonna post it right here. But I'm using that same technique here where I pin it with my elbow and then I stretch it out to the side or I twist my arm. And what this does is it helps to just stretch the fascia in a really deep way, which is really what the body needs and it helps it to release. 
and also going super slow is so important. Now I wanted to show the gua sha treatment from laying down position because that's how I usually tackle it. But this is also a really effective way to do gua sha on the back because you'll get that nice stretch from the head leaning forward and you can definitely do it from this position. All right, if you've tried this, comment down below and let me know how it goes. Make sure that you like this video and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.